Hello everyone, my name is Ian, you're watching Big Rock Moto, and thank you so much for tuning in today. Let's rewind, turn the clocks back about nine years ago to 2013. BMW was celebrating 90 years of motorcycle production, and they wanted to introduce a new model that would really celebrate that 90 years of heritage, hence the name R9T for 90. They wanted to release a bike that really was about the pure enjoyment of riding and they also of course wanted to compete with bikes like Triumph's very successful modern retro lineup. Since then the R9T has been quite successful for BMW and it spawned a whole different series of different models and it's also become a customizer's dream. So fast forward to today, 2022, nine years later, how does the R9T stack up and can it still stack up to the very fierce competition out there? So here's how I'm gonna structure the review for you today. First, we're gonna talk about the models and the pricing. Then we're going to take a look at the riding position, the ergonomics and the seat height. Then we're gonna take a tour around the bike, show you its specs and features. Then we'll get the bike out on the road, show you how it is to ride. Then we're gonna come back here, we're gonna discuss how this bike compares to the, its main competition. We'll discuss the pros and cons that I've discovered after riding this bike for the past month. And then we'll end with some final thoughts. So with that, let's go for a ride. All right, so the R9T can be a little bit confusing because it comes in so many different variations. Now, I wanna give a shout out to uh, Moto Bob, who runs a great motorcycle channel over in the UK. And he has a great video outlining all of the different R9T models. So I'm gonna link that below and just suggest you go there if you're really interested in dissecting all the different models. But just briefly, the R9T for 2022 or 23 comes in four uh, main models. Uh, starting with the R9T Pure, which is the bike you see here, although please keep in mind there's a lot of optional extras on this bike. So that R9T Pure is really a base model, has more budget level suspension and equipment, and it's a, it's a good starting point for people who want to customize the bike, and that bike starts just under $11,000 US base price. Above the R19 Pure in the lineup, you have two models. You have the Urban GS and you have the Scrambler. The Urban GS has the raised high front fender. It has a 19 inch front wheel and different levels of equipment and really has that GS inspired styling. And then you've got the Scrambler, which also is kind of that off-road uh, Scrambler style. It looks a lot different than the Urban GS, however, but it still does use the, the 19 inch front wheel. Both the Urban GS and the Scrambler start at 12,995 US base price. And then at the top of the range, it's kind of confusing because they just call the top model the R9T. No pure, no anything after that, just the R9T. That's your top model. You get better suspension, adjustable suspension, upside down front fork. You get better overall starting equipment. That bike starts at 15,500, and there's a lot of options from there. And playing around on BMW's website, you can get that model almost all the way up to $20,000, which is hard to believe, but these options uh, really do add up. So that's a basic overview of the R9T lineup. Now my bike as tested here, uh, again you have the base price of about 11,000, but I have the Option 719 packs, I have the Build Aluminum packs, I've got the Select package, I've got the uh, Sport Silencer, I've got spoked wheels, all that brings up the price, and I'll put this here on the screen, on my bike to just a little over $15,000. So definitely that base price can be pretty misleading on BMWs because the options add up to be quite a bit. All right, let's take a look at the seat height and the riding position. So the stated seat height, and there are optional seats, I believe higher and lower, BMW always has that, but this seat height is 31.7 inches, and I'll put the millimeters here. Let me jump on and kind of show you the riding position of the R9T Pure. So it is kind of a cafe racer style riding position. So you can see here uh, the bend in my knee, which is not too extreme, although the pegs are set a little bit back and a little bit high so you don't scrape during cornering. Uh, you can see the sort of uh, bend in my back here, uh, which is not too extreme, it's just a slight forward lean. I do find myself sometimes riding more like this to get out of the wind, or riding more like this with cruise control to relax. But overall, I find the riding position to be pretty comfortable and a pretty good compromise between being sporty and being comfortable. And then you can see the reach to the ground here. I have a 32 inch inseam. Um, I'm five foot 11 or 180 centimeters tall. I weigh 195 pounds or about 86 kilograms. And you can see here, it's very easy for me to touch the ground. The bike feels very low to the ground for somebody of my size. All right, let's begin and take a quick tour around the R9T Pure and talk about the specs really quick. So let's cover the specs to start off. So the engine, it's a 1,170cc 
air oil cooled boxer twin or opposed twin engine. Uh, the rated horsepower is about 109 horsepower and the rated torque is around 86 foot pounds in this configuration. Of course the engine is hooked up to a six speed transmission and it is hooked up to a shaft final drive which is one hallmark of many BMWs and reduces the maintenance because you're not dealing with a chain. Let's talk about the suspension, tires, wheels, and brakes real quick. So on the pure model, you get this budget-oriented fork. It's a 43-millimeter fork. It has 4.7 inches of travel and no adjustments. On the back on this model, uh, you have the same 4.7 inches of travel. You do have a preload adjustment, and I believe there's also a rebound damping adjustment there on the bottom. So at least you do have a little bit of adjustability on the back. For tires and wheels, so you've got a 170 width rear tire on a 17 inch rear wheel. Some of the other models have a narrower rear tire. And on the front, on the Pure models and the R9 T models, the road oriented ones, you get a 17 inch front wheel and tire. And this happens to be a 120 width there. For brakes, you have dual 320 millimeter discs up front with four piston Brembo calipers on each side. They're not radio brakes, they're uh, axial mount brakes, so not the highest end brakes there, but plenty of brakes for this relatively lightweight bike. Let's talk about the fuel capacity for a second. So you get a 4.5 gallon fuel tank and getting around 40 to 45 miles a gallon, uh, you're going to get a fuel light somewhere around 130 miles, somewhere in that range, and you'll probably run out of gas somewhere between 150 and 200 miles, depending on how fast you're riding. Now we need to talk about the weight. So the wet weight uh, fueled up on this bike on the R19 models is anywhere between 480 and 490 pounds. They spec out this model, I think, at 483 for the R19 Pure, but little changes are going to affect that depending on what wheels you get, what exhaust you get, etc., etc. Now, let's talk about warranty and maintenance really quick. So BMW, you do get a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty, which is one of the best in the business. Let's talk about maintenance really fast on this bike. So oil changes, BMW wants you to change oil every 6,000 miles, and oil changes are easy with an automotive-style filter and, you know, a drain plug, and you've got the filler cap here, which they do give you a tool to open that up. They do want you also to adjust the valves every 6,000 miles. Uh, some people don't do that, or no, let me rephrase what I said. Uh, you need to check the valve clearances, not necessarily adjust them. They're probably not going to be out of spec every time, so you're just doing an inspection every 6,000 miles, which is pretty often, pretty frequent for a modern motorcycle, but because you have the cylinders here, it's very easy to pop these covers off, inspect the valves. There's really not a whole lot to it. Now, if you have to adjust the valves, it's a little more involved because you have shims and things like that going on. Now, every 12,000 miles, they want you to change the oil in the final drive, which is very easy, something you could do at home. They also want you to change the spark plugs and change out the air filter. So um, overall, I think this is a relatively easy bike to live with, easy to maintain, and of course, you don't have a chain to deal with. And despite the pretty frequent valve checks, I don't think you're going to find that you need to adjust them that often. Let's just take a quick tour around the bike, starting at the front. So again, there's so many R19 models that the equipment you see might be different on the bike you're looking at. This bike has a small metal fly screen, part of an option package. You also have the LED adaptive headlight on this model, which was an optional extra, cost quite a bit of money. You have this uh, brushed aluminum front mudguard here. We've talked about the tires and brakes. You can see the oil cooler here, the front of the engine here, where I believe the clutch is somewhere up here. You can see the exhaust, which on this bike is a little bit dirty, needs a little bit of polishing. Of course, the famous boxer engine here. You can see LED turn signals. Uh, let's see, moving around the side here, this model has the metal gas tank. The air intake ducts are here. Uh, you can see some more stuff going on here. I like how all this is exposed. It makes it look very mechanical, like a real motorcycle, you know? You've got your foot pegs, brake levers here, passenger foot pegs, uh, the rear subframe, which it does look like it is detachable from this main part of the frame. I like this finishing detail here under the seat, this kind of vented thing with these cool finishing. It just looks really, really nicely done, very premium looking. Got the shaft drive, of course. This model has, this bike has the optional rear cowl over the seat to make it look like a cafe racer. In the rear, LED turn signals, LED uh, combination tail stoplight. You've got your license plate holder. Uh, this model has the Acropovic exhaust and the style option exhaust, which look has this twin outlet like trumpets. Looks very, very cool. I'm really a big fan of it, although I wish it was a little bit louder, which we'll talk about when we ride it. Not much else to see here. Now, coming up to 
the instrumentation and handlebar. So you have a wide tubular handlebar here. You've got adjustable clutch and brake lever, standard BMW mirrors. You can see uh, standard BMW switchgear cruise control on this bike, which is part of one of the option packages. High and low beam switch here, hazard lights, which is nice to have. Uh, this will turn off your traction control, I believe, if you hold that down. Uh, menu buttons up and down to scroll through the menu here. This model, because it's a pure has, does not have a tack, so you've got a few things here, like a setup menu, odometer, uh, trip meter, another trip meter, temperature, engine temperature, clock, and that's about it there. Uh, you can see you've got heated grips, dedicated button for heated grips here. Again, that's an optional extra. You have uh, high, low, and off. But I do like having a dedicated button. Mode menu, mode switch for riding modes. So you've got road mode, dynamic, rain. So basically just three modes there, which you can choose from. So road is your standard. Dynamic is a more aggressive throttle response and less intrusive traction control and ABS. And then road mode is going to make make the, uh, I mean, sorry, rain mode is going to make the electronic safety systems more active in case of slippery conditions. It also reduces your throttle response, but it does not reduce the horsepower. So I think that's about it for the tour. You can see locking gas cap here. This bike does not have keyless ride like some of the higher end BMWs, so you do have an actual physical mechanical key here, and everything feels very nice and solid. All right, let's get on board this BMW R9T and take this thing for a ride and see how she goes. So when you start the BMW up, you get the nice little needle swing. You can see the very simple gauges here, obviously. One thing you're going to notice when I start it up is you can see the bike kind of, and feel it move side to side, which I think adds a lot of character. So see if now if I rev it, the bike moves side to side. That's a characteristic of the Boxer engine, something I really like. There's a couple things you're going to notice right away when you're riding the R9T. But first, let me give this thing the beans a little bit here. So that gives you a sense of the acceleration. It's pretty strong, you know, 110 horsepower is nothing to, nothing to sneeze at. So what I was going to say before was, there's a couple things you notice. Uh, one is how much torque the engine makes, especially in the mid-range. So, you know, you open the throttle and it surges forward. Um, almost 90 foot-pounds of torque, that's, that's quite a lot. The other thing you'll notice is, because of the riding position, it kind of puts you a little bit forward, like up over the handlebars and over the tank. When you're looking ahead, you kind of feel like you're flying. And this is kind of particular to a bike of a style like this because you barely see any instrumentation or windshield or anything really. And so it gives you this really involving, engaging, really enjoyable sensation of kind of floating or flying over the highway. One of the next things I noticed about the R9T right away when I started testing it, and it's not very flattering thing, is the suspension feels very budget. It feels very bouncy. The ride's pretty harsh. And it is true that this Pure model has a very basic suspension, and I'm not a fan of it at all. So I think you definitely want to go for the higher spec model to get the better suspension. Or if you get this Pure model, maybe plan on doing some suspension upgrades if you're picky like me. But all these cracks in the road, all these bumps, I really feel all of them. And, and if I'm, you know, cornering aggressively, riding more aggressively, picking up the pace a little bit, in the corners, it, it doesn't lend the, the best feeling of confidence when I'm starting to push the pace a little bit a little bit further. Uh, let's talk about the brakes. So the brakes are what you expect from BMW. Very, very strong Brembo brakes. No problem there with the power or the modulation or anything like that. Uh, let's put the engine in sixth gear at 35 miles an hour and show you. So if you do that, there's no tachometer, but I know I'm at real low RPM, like 2,000. You can feel the vibration coming through that huge uh, twin-cylinder boxer engine. I I don't feel it to be like a, a bad sensation. It's just some uh, a buzz, not a buzz, but a vibration that you're going to notice at certain RPMs with the big boxer engine. And you can probably see it in the mirrors here. 
but if you keep it in the appropriate gear which right now would probably be third or fourth gear the engine's actually pretty smooth let's go back to the handling for a minute so besides the bouncy suspension the motorcycle is very capable for handling twisty paved back roads like this and I feel this is one of its best attributes. The bike really gives you a sense that you're going fast, of speed, of, of engagement with, with the riding. It's very This wide handlebar gives you a lot of leverage for back and forth. So it handles very natural, it's very enjoyable, extremely enjoyable to ride on a back twisty road like this. What about the overall comfort? So the seat is not very comfortable. We'll talk about that more later. The riding position is pretty, uh, it's a little bit forward and your, your feet are a little bit back, a little bit rear set, but it's not uncomfortable. I've ridden this bike for a few hours at a time and I haven't found it to be uncomfortable. There's no wind protection, obviously, uh, except for this tiny little fly screen this one has. Um, but because you're, because you're leaned forward, you're kind of braced against the wind. So I don't find that to be a huge issue unless you're in cold weather or you ride somewhere with a ton of bugs where you're always gonna have bugs on your helmet. In that case, you might be looking at a bike with more of a windshield. Uh, but the overall comfort I find to be quite good with uh, except for the things that I mentioned. Uh, the on-off fueling, so the throttle response is very smooth, very, BMW does a pretty good job with this. They don't have a jerky throttle like some manufacturers do. So no problem there. Uh, the gear shift is very slick, very nice. I do wish I had a quick shifter. I feel like a bike is sporty enough that a quick shifter would be kind of nice. Although if you get the hang of it, you can kind of snake through the gears like this uh, without using the clutch if you know how to kind of rev match a little bit. You hear a little bit of the engine kind of going when you rev this thing up and a little bit of exhaust noise, but I wish there were some more. Uh, it's a very engaging bike and I think a little more exhaust noise would, would, would definitely help with that. This bike has a lot of power really for what it is. Uh, so you can find yourself going, you know, very at very illegal speeds really quite quickly. So when I rev the engine out, you know, it's pretty buzzy at high RPM. These older Boxer engines, the, the new 1250 uh, shift cam motors are pretty smooth, but these older Boxers, they're a little bit buzzy at high RPMs. They don't love the feeling of being revved out to, to redline, really. So you try to stick within the mid range. That's where this engine's happy. Something that's nice about this, this motorcycle, but also this genre, kind of this cafe racer, kind of roadster style, is that it's very basic. You don't have a lot of distractions here. You don't have a big windshield in your line of sight. You don't have much instrumentation. You've got a very simple handlebar. There's no hand guards. So everything feels very raw, and it's a very pure riding experience. Um, and that's something I really enjoy about, about this kind of bike, and, and also the R9T in particular. So my overall summary of, of the riding experience of this bike, it's enjoyable to ride. It connects you to the, the wind and the weather and, the, and the, the feeling of being flying through the air. It does a very, very good job of that. And um, it's a motorcycle that I, I truly enjoy riding. Now, can, can we justify the price? Can we sort of get our heads around the price versus the competition? Well, we're going to have to talk about that little boy in this next session because, yeah, it, it, this bike's getting a little bit pricey for what it offers. So, uh, with that, uh, let's head back to the, to the garage. All right, we're back. I hope you all enjoyed going on that ride with me as much as I enjoyed taking that ride. Beautiful day to get out on this beautiful motorcycle. So what are the main competition uh, to the R9T? Now, there's a lot of bikes you might be cross shopping, but we have to hone in on really what are the direct competitors when you look at the pricing, the equipment, the, the engine power, and things of that nature. Uh, so the main ones that I've identified would be the Kawasaki Z900 RS, the Yamaha XSR900, uh, of course, you have Triumphs uh, Retro Twins, the uh, Street, no, I'm sorry, the Speed Twin, which uses the 1200 engine and also the Thruxton with the 1200 engine. 
So those are going to be your really your main competitors, uh, comparing you know the the closest you can in terms of engine power and specs, pricing, and everything like that. So how would you choose this over the other bikes? Well, uh, one thing that makes the BMW unique versus all those bikes I mentioned, and I didn't mention Moto Guzzi because I didn't want to get into that, and it's kind of a smaller brand. Uh, and that would be an exception to what I'm about to say, but the BMW uses a shaft final drive, so you don't have chain tension, you don't have chain oil, you don't have chain making a mess all over your bike, and that's a big distinction versus those other competitors I talked about. Uh, the other thing is, it's gonna depend on what engine configuration and what sound and feel you prefer. So this is the only Roadster or, or kind of cafe racer style bike, of course, with the Boxer twin engine, which has its own unique sound and feel and character to it. The other bikes I mentioned, so the Yamaha uses an inline three cylinder engine, which has a very distinct sound and feel. The Triumphs use a parallel twin engine, so they have their own distinct sound and feel, and it makes the bike also quite a bit narrower than something like this. So uh, the engines, none of them are really a clear winner. Uh, if you want the most power, uh, this has quite a bit of power. The Yamaha also has quite a bit. The Triumphs are down a little bit on power, but they do pretty well with the torque. So you're going to have to decide on those things. There's styling, which is personal to you. What styling do you prefer this over some of those other bikes? If we want to talk about pricing, the BMW definitely, especially once you start to add options to it, the price can get up there pretty high. So I mentioned my tester here is over 15,000. You can option an R9T almost all the way to 20,000, uh, which you're not probably going to do with the Triumphs I mentioned or the Z900 RS or the XSR 900. So the value leader is definitely going to be that, that Yamaha XSR. comes with a lot of stuff for 9999 US. The styling, you either love it or you don't. Uh, the engine, you like the triple or you don't. And there's definitely, it doesn't have the premium fit and finish and level of kind of quality and detailing that the BMW does or maybe even that the Triumphs do. All right, so what are the pros and cons as I see it to the R9T? So I've had this bike for the past three to four weeks. I've done quite a few rides and actually I really enjoyed it. It's a great bike to like do Sunday morning rides or ride to cafes or just, you know, an all around bike to jump on and just go for a ride. Really like it for that. So the pros and cons. So the pros, I think that the uh, fit and finish and attention to detail, the premium uh, finishes of it, how everything's put together. There was so much thought put into it, so much engineering put into it, and I really appreciate that. And it's really a head turner when you start looking at all the attention to detail. Another thing I really like about this bike or this platform, I should say, is there's so much potential for customization. So um, seats, you know, seat cowls, windshields, different uh, wheels and tires, you can do different, different um, engine covers, you can you can, you know, put, I've seen people make it into, do a scrambler look with the knobby tires. You, you can do so many different customizations, not only from BMW, but also in the aftermarket or with custom bike building companies that uh, you can make the R9T look unique for yourself and how you want it to, to look and perform. So I think that's really, it's a great platform for doing that. One of the other pros that I really like about this bike is the engine. So while I'm not totally in love with the way the Boxer sounds overall, I think there's other engines that sound more engaging or more pleasing to the ear. I do like the amount of torque it produces at all RPM. So it has a ton of low and mid-range grunt. It can be a little coarse at the high RPMs, uh, but overall the grunt is very addicting, pulling out of corners and just that torque pulling you along. So I do appreciate that about this bike. So every motorcycle has cons, right? They have drawbacks to them, and we're gonna talk about those now. So a couple things relating to the gauge cluster. So on this bike, you don't get a tachometer, which I find uh, very strange. I know this is the pure model and the other models do have a tack, but I really would like to have a tack even on this model. Also, there's no fuel gauge. I, I consider a fuel gauge to be very basic instrumentation and not having it makes me always wonder how much fuel I have. I mentioned a couple of these things when we were riding it, uh, but uh, the seat is very thin, the padding's not that great, and I start to squirm after about 100 miles in the saddle. Although I think for a lot of people, this is gonna be their you know, Sunday morning bike or cafe bike that may not go touring with it. But again, keep in mind, if you're gonna ride longer distances, may look into an aftermarket saddle. The other thing I mentioned during the ride was the suspension quality. The quality of the damping and everything feels very cheap. It feels very, uh, very bouncy and harsh ride and not the greatest control. When you're hitting bumps, especially in the middle of corners, you're trying to get a little more aggressive. Really think that that's a drawback to this particular model. The uh, more up-spec R19 models do have a better suspension. A couple more things. I already mentioned the pricing. We've covered that in a couple sections. The pricing on this gets pretty high relative to the competition, so that's something you're going to have to keep in mind. However, you do get a good warranty, and BMWs do typically have really good resale value. 
The last and final thing I want to mention is I wish it had a little bit more exhaust roar, a little bit more exhaust sound. I feel like the potential is there. I don't like loud motorcycles. I'm not a fan of that at all, but I feel like this already has the uh, Acropovic silencer on it, which is an optional extra that you have to pay for, but it still doesn't have a whole lot of sound to it when you're riding it. And yeah, I just like a little bit more sound. I think it would make the ride a little bit more engaging. Final thoughts on BMW's R9T Pure. I've had to film this segment several times now because I have a lot of thoughts about this bike and about this category in general. But here's what I'll say about the R9T. This is a fun, engaging, uh, joyful motorcycle that is extremely well made and feels like it's crafted from solid metal and even looks frankly like it's crafted all from solid metal. It's really a unique and enjoyable experience and is a bike that if you're considering a roadster or one of these sort of modern retro bikes and you like the quality from BMW, this should be very very high on your list along with the other bikes I talked about. The more time I spent riding the R9T, the more I really connected with this bike. And it's made me realize that I really want to put some sort of uh, uh, cafe racer or modern retro roadster in my garage. I'm not sure if it's gonna be this or something else. There's a lot of good options out there, but I really like the experience that I feel like I'm flying and I feel so connected to the riding experience. So if you haven't spent time on this style of motorcycle, you really owe yourself to do that. Because I often ride bikes that uh, because they have so much technology, so much wind protection, so many features that they kind of disconnect you and distract you from the riding experience. And this bike is the opposite of that. It reconnects me to the pure joy, the thrill of riding, the mechanical aspect of it. And it's something I really truly appreciate about this bike. So I hope this was a useful review. If it was, please support Big Rock Moto. There's a lot of ways to do that in the description below. Other than that, please ride safe and I'll see you out there.